Hi students and welcome to your final lecture in the series on translation and methods in transcription and translation. In this lecture, we will look at translation control through the process of mRNA degradation and we will discuss the mechanisms by which non-coding RNAs such as microRNAs or siRNAs contribute to mRNA degradation. RNAs can be degraded both in the nucleus and in the cytoplasm. In the nucleus, incorrectly spliced mRNAs can be degraded by an enzyme called the exosome. The exosome has three prime to five prime exonuclease activity. In addition to incorrectly spliced mRNAs, Introns are also degraded by the exosome in the nucleus. In the cytoplasm, functional mRNA transcripts can be degraded after they are translated into proteins. Non-functional mRNAs, such as mRNAs that have a premature stop codon, are also degraded in the cytoplasm in a process called nonsense mediated decay. We will now discuss how functional and non-functional mRNAs in the cytoplasm are degraded. And both these processes also involve exonucleases. Functional mRNAs in the cytoplasm contain a 5' prime cap and a poly A tail. And these post-transcriptional modifications protect these mRNAs from degradation. Therefore, before an mRNA in the cytoplasm can be degraded, it must first be deadenylated. Once an mRNA is deadenylated, this involves removal of the poly A tail, it can then be degraded in a three to five prime direction by an exonuclease. The exosome has also been shown to degrade mRNAs in the cytoplasm. After deadenylation, mRNAs can be degraded more rapidly in a process of deadenylation dependent decapping. In this process, deadenylation specific enzymes are also involved in promoting decapping of the mRNA transcript. This prevents translation of that mRNA and also makes the decapped mRNA susceptible to exonucleases that can act in a 5 to 3 prime direction. In the cytoplasm, mRNA degradation occurs in granular structures that are called P bodies, and this can be visualized under a microscope. The degradation of non-functional mRNAs occur in a process called nonsense-mediated decay. And this process also involves exonucleases. In this example, we'll show how a transcript that contains a premature stop codon in an exon can be degraded in this process. A stop codon is usually located in the last exon of an mRNA transcript. Exon junction complexes bind to specific regions within exons. And the exon junction complex is located 20 to 24 bases upstream of an exon to exon junction. In this diagram, you can see that the exon junction complex is located upstream of the exon to exon junction. When a premature stop codon is located in an earlier exon, this results in the stop codon being located upstream of the exon junction complex. So this diagram shows a premature stop codon in blue and the correct stop codon represented by the X. During translation, 
ribosomes play a role by displacing these exon junction complexes. In the event of a premature stop codon being added to the mRNA transcript, the last exon junction complex will not dissociate from the mRNA strand, and therefore it will remain associated with this mRNA. If translation terminates prematurely, the exon junction complex that remains on the mRNA can recruit enzymes that are involved in degradation of the mRNA that contains the premature stop codon. And this process is referred to as nonsense mediated decay. Regulatory RNAs can also play a role in inhibiting gene expression through RNA degradation. Small RNAs, which are 20 to 30 bases in length, can inhibit gene expression. Short interfering RNAs and microRNAs may have perfect or partial sequence complementarity to an mRNA strand. These siRNAs or microRNAs promote RNA degradation or can block translation. If there is perfect sequence complementarity, an siRNA or microRNA that binds perfectly to an mRNA can promote degradation through endonucleolytic cleavage of the RNA strand. This leads to degradation of the mRNA through exonuclease digestion due to the cleavage of that mRNA strand in the middle of the transcript. If a microRNA has partial complementarity to an mRNA, it can inhibit the translation of that mRNA due to the fact that it prevents the ribosome from binding and translating that mRNA into a protein. We'll now look at the enzymes that are involved in this process. MicroRNAs are transcribed from genes in the nucleus. They are also post-transcriptionally modified with a cap and a poly-A tail. In the nucleus, an enzyme called drosha is involved in removing a 5' cap and poly-A tail from a prime microRNA. This results in the formation of a pre-microRNA. MicroRNAs can fold into a secondary structure and fold back upon themselves to form these structures that are called hairpins. This is due to base complementarity on the microRNA. The pre-microRNA is then exported into the cytoplasm. siRNAs are double-stranded RNAs that have exact base complementarity to an mRNA. SIRNAs are commonly used in research and they are artificially introduced into cells to adopt the same mechanism of RNA degradation that occurs with microRNAs. Once these double-stranded RNAs enter the cytoplasm, an enzyme called DICER binds to the siRNA or pre-microRNA. DICER then recruits an RNA-induced silencing complex called RISC. The RISC complex then processes these double-stranded RNAs to single-stranded RNAs. The RISC complex also includes a member of the argonaut family of proteins. The argonaut family is a family of endonucleases. Now that the small single-stranded RNAs are associated with the risk complex, they are able to bind to complementary mRNA molecules. If the small RNA has exact base complementarity with an mRNA strand, the argonaut protein can cleave the mRNA strand 10 to 11 bases upstream of the small RNA start site. This results in a nick in the mRNA strand, and this results in free and exposed ends of that mRNA strand, which will result in 
cleavage of the mRNA and degradation by exonucleases. Very interestingly, the small RNA that is associated with the risk complex is not cleaved by the argonaut protein in this process. In most cases, microRNAs have partial base complementarity with the mRNA strand due to their secondary folded structure. MicroRNAs associated with risk and argonaut can therefore block translation of that mRNA due to the fact that the risk complex is now associated with the small RNA, and therefore that will inhibit ribosome movement along the mRNA strand. And this serves as a method of regulating the translation of RNAs in the cytoplasm. This concludes our discussion on mRNA degradation, and this will be the last lecture for this course. Thank you for your time.